1.1 Intro to Servicing This module introduces the different stages in the oil and gas exploration and production process. To power our world, we are very reliant on two important natural resources, oil and gas. Cars, transportation, power, electronics almost everything we use runs on oil and natural gas. Another way to describe oil and gas is hydrocarbons, because they are made up of two elements, hydrogen and carbon. To understand how hydrocarbons formed, we need to go back millions of years ago. Imagine the species that lived plants and animals and many different types of organisms. Over millions of years, as these organisms died, they were buried underground. Water, wind and geologic events deposited layers of sediments, on top of these dead organisms, burying them. For example, let's say you go to the beach. You see the waves come in and come out. Over millions of years, the water movement creates many different layers of rock. We call each of these layers of different rocks a formation, and each layer, each formation, represents millions of years of rock history. Over time, the plant and animal matter is buried under all of this intense heat and pressure of the rock layers. Under all this temperature and pressure, the dead plant and animal bodies turn into hydrocarbons, oil and gas. The same oil and gas we use today, the same gasoline we ultimately put into our cars that same oil was originally, dead plant and animal matter, millions of years ago. Let's fast forward now to the present day. Let's say we own land and we want to see, if we have hydrocarbons on our land. Well, how can we search for hydrocarbons? that are so far and so deep underground. There are a lot of different techniques used to find oil and gas, including geologic exploration, well logging analysis, and seismic. Seismic is one of the most interesting techniques. Scientists measure sound wave movement underground, to try to figure out what types of materials, the sound is traveling through. Imagine hitting the ground with a big hammer. Sound waves from the hammer will go deep underground, bounce against the different formations, and then come back to sensors at the surface. Engineers can measure how fast or how slow these sound waves travel, to see whether or not oil and gas may be underground. All of these exploration technologies can help us look for hydrocarbons underground. However, ultimately, the only way to be 100% sure that hydrocarbons exist is to actually drill a well. And that's where well drilling comes into play. We need to drill through thousands of feet of many different types of underground rocks and liquids to be able to find oil and gas. Essentially, we need to drill a really deep hole. During drilling operations, we use different equipment to quickly and efficiently drill a hole into the ground. Our goal is to drill to the formation, wherever it is, that contains oil and gas. After we drill to our desired depth, we begin completions operations. During well completions operations, we are readying the well for years of successful oil and gas production. We know oil and gas exists and we have drilled a hole to it. Our next step is to get it ready to be removed safely. After oil and gas starts flowing, we enter a phase known as well production. Well production is the years long process of actually extracting oil and gas out of the ground.
Whenever there are problems or challenges during the well production process, we may look into well servicing. During well servicing, we enter an already completed, producing well and perform different operations. For example, if a piece of production equipment breaks down, we would need to enter the well and fix it. Similarly, if oil stopped flowing upwards or if we wanted to make it flow faster, different well servicing strategies can be used. The final stage in a well's lifetime is well abandonment. When abandoning a well, we have typically exhausted all the oil and gas that we would like or are able to remove, and we are preparing the well for safe closure. During many of these well operations, from drilling to abandonment, all necessary work is performed by massive structures known as rigs. Rigs are made up of tools, equipment, and safety mechanisms used to perform different well operations. Every type of rig is different, and different rigs are designed to carry out different operations. Some rigs have the ability to drill a hole in the ground. Other rigs can pump and circulate different fluids in and out of the hole. Other rigs can transmit messages and information about what is happening underground. At the end of the day, the goal is to use the cheapest possible well servicing equipment that can do the job as safely effectively, and quickly as possible. The most expensive and powerful type of rig is a drilling rig. Used for the majority of drilling operations, a drilling rig has the ability to do almost anything, drill, quickly lower piping into the hole, circulate, and much more. A workover rig is a smaller version of a drilling rig that is less expensive but does almost all the same things. As a result, a workover rig is not designed for extensive drilling but is used for the most challenging well servicing procedures. For many operations, a full-fledged rig is not needed. Instead, units are smaller sets of equipment, used to perform different well operations more inexpensively. First, a snubbing unit is another well servicing option. A snubbing unit is smaller and more compact than a workover rig, making it cheaper. In addition, a snubbing unit can service a well while it is producing, while it is actively bringing oil and gas to the surface. An even cheaper option for well servicing is the coiled tubing unit. A coiled tubing unit utilizes a different type of pipe, coil tubing, that is much more flexible, allowing for quick, easy servicing and well circulation. Lastly, the cheapest structure for well servicing is the wireline unit. The wireline unit lowers very thin cable, essentially wire, into the well with different tools attached to it. Wireline is the easiest and cheapest unit to use for servicing. In this course, our focus will be on different well servicing operations, wireline, coil tubing, and snubbing. We will delve into the different processes and the role of well control in ensuring safe, reliable servicing. Nice job. You're done with this chapter. Good luck with the quiz. Process. This module walks through the well completions process. Once we have finished drilling to our desired depth and have found petroleum, we enter a phase of the drilling process known as well completions. During well completions operations, we are readying the well for years of successful oil and gas production. We know oil and gas exists and we have drilled a hole to it. Our next step is to get it ready to be removed safely. The last step of the drilling process is to put production casing into place. Production casing is pipe that lines the walls of the entire hole, from the very top to the very bottom. 
Next, we bring an explosive tool into the hole. We perforate or poke holes in the bottom of this casing to allow for sustained, long-term oil and gas flow. Then, we insert a packer into the hole. A packer is a device used to isolate an area of the hole. Packers are inserted into the hole and consist of slips, steel teeth that bite into the casing to hold into place. Then, we bring out thinner pipe, known as tubing, and have it go through the entire hole all the way from the top of the well to the bottom. When oil flows out of the ground, we want the fluid to come up through this tubing. The casing, set earlier, is still used to keep the hole stable and isolate the well from outer zones. Within the casing, the smaller tubing is used to actually allow for oil and gas flow upwards. The packer makes sure fluid only comes upward through the tubing, not around it. Nice job. You're done with this chapter. Good luck with the quiz. Into fundamental wireline equipment and its role in the well servicing process. As a part of the well servicing process, one of the most important tools used is wireline. Wireline, as it sounds, is thick, strong line of wire that can be lowered into the drilled hole. There are three main types of wire line used during servicing operations, slick line, braided line, and deal line. Each type of wire can be used for different types of well service operations. During production operations, we are constantly producing oil and gas fluids from the hole. Sometimes, during this process, we run tests on the reservoir we are producing from. The goal of these tests is to discover more information about the reservoir. How much oil and gas does the formation contain? Are there any problems downhole? E-line, or electric line is a form of wire line that is electrically charged. E-line is used any time we need to communicate an electronic or magnetic message downhole. During wireline logging operations, different sensors are attached to E-line and lowered deep into the hole. The sensors transmit data to the surface through the wireline. Once the sensors are deep enough underground, they can send out waves to measure the characteristics of the relevant formation. Then, logging companies analyze the data to understand more about the underground rock. During other servicing operations, different objects need to be lowered or removed from the well. For these operations, we need a method to easily bring equipment and tools in and out of the well. Slick line is single strand wire lowered into the hole to raise and lower tools, perform maintenance, or lift dropped objects to the surface. Slick line is generally the cheapest, but also the weakest. Option for servicing a well. Unlike E line, slick line is simple wire without any electrical elements. As a result, slick line is a lot cheaper than E line and used for many servicing operations. 
Lastly, braided line is a far stronger version of strand wire line that incorporates several wires braided together into one. Both slick line and D-line can be braided together. Braided line is generally used to lower or pick up much heavier objects and tools as it is stronger. Nice job. You're done with this chapter. Good luck with the quiz. This module introduces the coil tubing unit. The coil tubing unit is a well servicing unit utilized for many different well operations. The use of coil tubing, highly flexible hose like pipe, allows for much greater operational flexibility than many other servicing methods. Drill pipe and conventional tubing, like most piping, require thousands of pieces of pipes to reach the bottom of deep wells. Adding each piece of pipe is a long, strenuous, in taxing process. Meanwhile, coiled tubing can be stored and unrolled off a reel, just like a water hose or sewing thread. This makes coiled tubing operations significantly faster than conventional workover. The coil tubing string is rolled up and stored on the reel until operations begin. The length of the string is dependent on the depth of the well and can be tens of thousands of feet long. Lastly, the greatest advantage of coiled tubing over other servicing methods, such as wireline, is that it has the ability to circulate while being lowered in and out of the well. Coiled tubing can be used to circulate fluids in and out of the well bore, just like piping. Coil tubing can be utilized for almost every well servicing operation discussed in the last section. The functions of coil tubing can be split into two categories. 1. Lowering and raising tools, and 2. Circulation. Coil tubing is designed to raise and lower objects into the well, under pressure. Even if a well is live with pressure at the wellhead, a coil tubing unit is designed to successfully lower objects into or raise objects out of the well. In addition, coil tubing is also designed to circulate fluid from the surface into the well. Coil tubing can be utilized for both one-way and round-trip circulation into the well. Nice job. You're done with this chapter. Good luck with the quiz.